So here we are with another piece of art that begs the question, should black folks watch this? Is the Underground Railroad directed by Barry Jenkins another piece of traumatic porn, right? Is it, tra is it black trauma as spectacle? I'm gonna try to talk about these things in this video as thorough as I possibly can and hopefully use this video to inform you what this show is about, right? And whether or not you should watch it yourself. So stick around. Let's get into it. If you like this type of content, go ahead and drop a like on this video and click that subscribe button. Smack that notification bell so you won't miss a new upload. What's happening? I'm Purple Boy. You guys are tuning in to Purple Film. Hey, yo, check this out. Before I get into my thoughts for Underground Railroad, I want to hear your thoughts about it if you've seen it already. On a scale from 1 to 10, what would you rate this series, right? What were your favorite parts or what were your most hated parts? Or do you just hate this series altogether? I want to hear what you think, what's on your mind. Go ahead and go into the comments and discuss it with your boy, all right? Now let's go ahead and jump into this, okay? I'm gonna give you the good, I'm gonna give you the bad, and then I'm gonna wrap it all up with my final thoughts. This is going to be an uncomfortable review. There's gonna be some spoilers in this as well. I'm gonna be talking about some very tough, uh, tough things that actually happen. Uh, it's, it's, it's about to get real, so I'm just forewarning you. One of my biggest complaints of any historical film or series are the characters. It seems like so often these works of art are so consumed with the varied ways to torture black people that they forget that they're torturing human beings. Traumatic imagery and traumatic experience in of itself, right, was never the issue. That was never the problem. The issue has always been not recognizing the subject of the traumatic experience as human beings and not black bodies, right? I absolutely hate that term so much, black bodies. I, I wanted to show what America is doing to these black bodies so people will understand, like, no, man, fuck that. Stop referring to black people as black bodies that is just dehumanizing and that fucking sucks. Uh, and I do appreciate this show actually uh, for, you know, cleverly commenting on that very thing, right? Commenting on uh, entertainment and the way our stories are exploited through that, right? I think this show uh, does a, a pretty solid job of commenting on that. Characters is what this series absolutely nails, even more so than the breathtaking photography. And it is breathtaking. It's the beautiful and sad and intricate portrait that this series paints of these characters uh, that really kept me invested uh, for the 10 series or for the 10 episode series. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about all the characters. I'm just gonna focus on two characters that really angered the entire uh, story for me emotionally. Um, and I mean, just these two characters were just really compelling, man. Absolutely love them. Of course, it's the main character, uh, Cora, uh, played by uh, Thuso Madu, uh, and uh, Arnold Ridgway, played by uh, Joel Edgerton. Um, these two characters and these two actors uh, are really what, like I said, anchored the story for me. Uh, and just, you know, it, it made for... And it, it, I don't know, it made for a very compelling watch throughout the entire series. Th these two characters are what kept me like, you know, powering through this entire thing because it is long and it takes a minute to get through it. But just watching their story unfold, again, was is, is possibly one of the most compelling things about this entire series. Uh, you know, Cora's mother uh, plays a significant role in this, in, in the entire story. 
and she plays a significant role uh, in both uh, uh, Cora's life and uh, Arnold Ridgway's life. And first, uh, talking about Cora, uh, who was played beauf beautifully uh, by, by Thuso, man. She absolutely, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, uh, but she absolutely, absolutely kills it. Her story is about a young girl not only overcoming abandonment, uh, but the evil entity embedded within America and all its citizens. Her sheer will to live uh, has her beating the most insurmountable odds. Um, at one point, I thought the series was kind. Of, I thought the series was gonna kind of like end uh, with her being like Harriet Tubman. <laughs> I don't know why that crossed my mind. I was like, are they about to turn her to Harriet Tubman? Because there's one scene where she's talking to another character named Royal, and Royal's talking to her about how she's been through the Underground Railroad and how she's map. She's pretty much traveled longer than anybody else has uh, through this Underground Railroad and how. She could possibly help other folks, uh, but she's not a hero. You know what I'm saying? She, she's just somebody who is simply uh, wanting to survive. And, and and in the end, I'm glad they didn't do something so freaking Hollywood as to turn her character into Harriet Tubman, right? <laughs> um, Arnold Ridgway, his story is about how depression births hate, hate births uh, racism, racism being uh, synonymous with violence. His journey is also a spiritual one, just as Cora's journey is spiritual uh, in nature as well. I have always liked Joel Edgerton, right? I think he's a, a another great, phenomenal actor. Uh, but man, it was uh, Dussault's performance that really got me. It was her happiness, uh, her hopefulness, fear, and anger uh, that I thought she just conveyed so very well um she can she she really puts these emotions on display uh with with you know with a lot of complexity and and you know and she does it so well um and it's it i mean as an actor i mean i'm not I'm not saying that i'm an actor myself but an uh, actor's job is 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 to convey these emotions an actor's job is to get the audience to, to, to truly feel what's going on, you know, uh, in, in that, in a scene. And the first time we meet her, man, uh, you know, in that first episode, we get a really powerful scene between her and another major character. And it was right there. You just knew she was about to, she was about to eat. You know what I'm saying? You knew right then and there that in this role of hers, she was definitely about to eat. Uh, the most prominent expression I thought the actress displayed throughout the entire series was like this, you know, expression of bewilderment. bewilderment. Uh, so many times I could not help but kind of remind myself of Harry Potter. Um, when you think of Harry Potter, he's this character who enters this entirely new world uh, that's completely, you know, different and completely new and uh, you know, coming from, you know, the world that he once lived in, it's completely different, right? The, the, you know, not to say that the culture is necessarily different for Cora when she moves from, you know, being on the plantation, going out into the world, but that same idea, you know, applies. Uh, Cora, you know, to me anyways, felt like she was in this like sort of constant state of discovery uh, and that made her character even more compelling to watch. Um, it was certainly an angle I uh, did not expect, right? It, was, it wasn't something, you know, I was like, oh man, you know, if, if I'm gonna tell a slave story, this is how I would tell it, right? And I think the, uh, the, the actual, the, uh, the novelist who wrote the underground book, right? Because it was a book before it was a series. The novelist who wrote this, uh, the idea that he had was this sort of Gulliver's travel uh, type story uh, with Cora being the main actress. And again, moving her from, you know, the plantation and out into America and uh, discovering every, you know, discovering America like, you know, for the first time 
essentially is, is what it is. And you, you kind of got this little sense of a, you know, fish out of water story, but not really. But uh, yeah, man, it, it just, I couldn't help but think back to, 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 to Harry Potter because I, I, I just think that's pretty cool how Harry Potter just kind of takes in everything and us being the audience, right? We see things through his eyes and uh, Barry Jenkins does a, a great job of, allowing us to see through Cora's eyes as we witness all the horror and all the, you know, vile things that are happening in this country. Uh, and it's not like we haven't seen terrible things, right? It's not like Cora hasn't seen terrible things before. It's just that coming out of that plantation, right? You know, she's able to see more of the country and, you know, and, and, and you know, more of the evilness that's within it, right? <laughs> um the visuals is another again like i was saying earlier the visuals is another awesome thing of this series it reaches the type of levels uh it reaches really high levels of you know uh you know cinematic flair you know for lack of a better word uh that tv series don't often reach I think the last show that I can say uh, that kind of reached that sort of cinematic, uh, you know, uh, cinematic quality was Handmaid's Tale, right? I really like Handmaid's Tale, especially those first two seasons and the uh, cinematography in that show just looks absolutely uh, incredible. Um, I, I feel like, you know, Handmaid's Tales kind of touched uh you know what tv what television uh could actually do right television at that point it's like man television can actually be something uh to to replace <laughs> you know what i'm saying to replace theaters because it's like if i can just sit at home and get that same cinematic experience at home why do i need to go to theaters right and i think handmaid's tale did a good job of you know uh showing what if you showing what happens when you put, you know, actual budget and great talent behind the camera when it comes to these television shows. And so Underground Railroad is like a few steps above that. No lie, man. This this is absolutely incredible. Uh, the, the, the presentation is absolutely captivating. You know what I'm saying? This is not a series that you can be on your phone and kind of looking at the screen doing this. this. Nah, put your phone down, okay? Uh, because, you know, again, it's captivating. It deserves your undivided attention. Um, another positive I'm going to praise about this, uh, and, and, and this deserves a little more nuanced conversation too, but uh, trauma is explored here, right? And I know that's one of the things, that's a big thing when it comes to stuff like this. Trauma is explored here, uh, but it is not, you know, exploited, um, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, characters live through it, uh, but it does not define them, right? Uh, them, <laughs> which I, I did a review on, I did a video, a review or whatever on them, I talked about how much I did not like that series, uh, but that series is an egregious example of, you know, no character, all trauma, right? The, the, the characters, the characters are like a set, uh, like an afterthought. It's all about how, how can we completely shock the audience? How can we, you know what I'm saying? How, how can we, uh, you know, surprise the audience, you know? How can we elicit a, a strong emotional response? Oh, that's right. By making the violence, you know, uh, by taking the, by, by dialing the violence against black people to fucking 11. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, that always works. The shit is crazy, man. Yeah. I, I did not like that. Did not like that series. Did not like that series at all. Um, there are no white saviors in this, uh, <laughs> in, in this show, uh, at least not, not any that I noticed, to be honest, uh, you know, maybe well-intentioned, uh, white allies, uh, who honestly did more harm than they did good. Right. Which I thought was like, oh, that's kind of realistic, right? <laughs> that's actually a realistic depiction of, you know, of, of, of our allies, man. 
Uh, and, and, and again, that's something that is a reflection of what we're seeing today. Uh, and now going back to my Harry Potter comparison, uh, which I'm sure is, is a, it's a weird thing to make. <laughs> uh, my mind went back to that moment when, you know, Harry Potter, uh, you know, him and his friends, they're waiting at the train station and they first see that train arrive. Uh, and come to, you know, whisk, uh, take them away on, on these cool adventures. When Korra uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the other character that she's with, uh, or the, and the other character that she escapes the plantation with in the beginning episode, uh, when they board a literal underground train, right? So this is, this is fiction at this point. <laughs> they board a literal underground train. Uh, and it was majestic, man. It was so cool, right? F f when just seeing that train come in, I was like, oh man, that's so tight, right? It was, I definitely felt like it was really awe-inspiring. Definitely, uh, absolutely loved that scene. I, I mean, I actually kind of think that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, trains were kind of magic in a way uh, when I was a kid anyway. So I, I found it appropriate uh, that, that I would definitely... Uh, like this scene in the first episode um and also having a like having her you know ride that train throughout the throughout the series it, it definitely you know because again trains man there's so many me uh you know there's so many uh you know metaphors that you can come up with when it comes to trains but just having that be the vessel of which you know to take Cora on all these adventures again, I thought it was a, a pretty cool uh, uh, plot device or, or a pretty cool tool uh, that the story utilized very well. Uh, I want to get into two of my favorite episodes. Uh, so, well, let's yeah, the two my two favorite episodes of the entire season. So, the two favorite episodes of the entire season for me uh, was episode two. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to talk about episode one a little later, uh, but episode two is where the, the show really, really hooked me. Episode two is what really hooked me. Um, episode two explores our history with, you know, with, with the scientists uh, in this country as it focused on the sterilization of black women and men. After Cora and Caesar, uh, which is, again, uh, the character that she escapes with uh, from the plantation. But after these two characters escape, they settle in North Carolina, uh, which at first they're like, okay, this is clean. You know what I'm saying? We looking clean. We escaped the plantation. We're, in, we're, we're here in this place and we can make a home out of this. We can get married. We can have kids. It was a nice, you know, a sweet, brief, tender moment between these two characters, right? Um, and, you know, for that, for a little moment, you, you thought that there was a, you know, uh, a, you know, a little uh, ray of sunshine, like, oh, man, they, they made it out. They can really settle. Well, we know that wasn't it because, damn, we got eight more episodes left. Uh, but a, a cool thing I also like about this episode was that it, it gave me some Twilight Zone vibes, man. Not lying to you. Uh, it, it definitely gave me some Twilight Zone vibes because when they get into this place, everything seems so clean and pristine. I mean, it's really kind of eerie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's later revealed in, in, in the episode uh, that the sterilization was going on. And so, you know, a, a more sinister plot uh, was being revealed uh, lurking beneath the shiny marble, right? Uh, and, you know, it, it it's pretty... It's, it's pretty interesting how the episode focused on uh, the, you know, eugenics, right? Uh, eugenics and the experimentations on black folks uh, because, you know, how that correlates to what's going on now uh, with the whole COVID thing and whether or not you should or should not take the COVID shot. I, I thought that was rather timely, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man, it seems like any any piece of, uh, you know, art that's coming out nowadays that has anything to do about, that has anything to do with the black experience in America, it all seems timely at this point, right? It all seems freaking timely. Uh, 
The second, my second favorite episode that I, I want to talk about uh, is the Tennessee episode. Uh, when Arnold, so uh, in throughout the series, you know, there's this sort of back and forth between Arnold Ridgway, uh, who's the slave catcher, and Cora. And, uh, you know, w- so from the moment she leaves, uh, the uh, from the moment she leaves the plantation, Arnold is is on his on, is on her trail and he wants to catch her at all costs no matter what because her mother uh abandoned her when she was you know young and, and she left the plantation and um, he never caught her mother and so this is like a almost a vendetta against Cora and he he wants nothing more but to catch this woman and so he is like relentless relentlessly pursuing her uh, and as at a certain point he finally catches up to her he captures her and takes her back home uh to, to where he's from and that's tennessee uh and you know and that entire and like i said this entire episode i think it's like seven or eight i'm not exactly i think it was like six or seven i think it was episode six or seven i'm not exactly sure but this entire episode was just I, it was great i, I loved it but when he takes Cora back to his home, right? Uh, he, 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 you know, he, he's trying to pay respects to his dying father, um, whom he probably actually hadn't seen uh, since he left home to become a slave catcher. He also wanted closure, right, uh, to something that haunted him his whole life. It was this thing uh, his father talked about, and it was the it was the this thing his uh, father always talked about, and it was called the Great Spirit. His father called it the Great Spirit, and I'm assuming his father was referring to the soul, right, the human soul or or the spirit in in, in a human being that encourages him or that motivates him, uh, the 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 soul that the, the or the type of spirit that you know uh, gets a man up out of his bed every day. And, and uh, you know, and navigate life with a purpose, right? And so he's talking about this great spirit, right? And the thing about Arnold Ridgway's father is that his father actually, you know, he, 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 he did not treat, you know what I'm saying? He did not treat black folks like most folks did. Uh, he actually hired uh, freed men, freed black people, uh, to work for him. Uh, I think he has some, like, I think he's like, uh, some sort of iron, uh, you know, welding business that he had. And he actually hired black men to work for him. Right. So he, he didn't actually have slaves. Uh, and there was a bit of contention between Arn, I mean, yeah, between Arnold and his father and the slaves because his father saw that great spirit that he always talked about in these black men who worked for him, right? And in some ways, uh, his father loved, uh, you know, some of these guys more than he loved his son. And, you know, of course, as you can imagine, uh, that, you know, bred some hate in Arnold's heart. And he goes back home, uh, like I said, to pay respects and to find uh, some closure, and that episode was absolutely amazing. Not only do we find closure between Arnold and, you know what I'm saying, and his father, but we also get pretty much closure between Arnold and Cora. And we get a, a, a great scene where they're sitting in this, like, uh, this tavern or whatever, and they're just having this conversation, and, and Arnold gives his monologue, uh, you know, about the, the, the manifest destiny, right? How white people feel like whatever they think they should own, they should own it. And they should do whatever they can to own that, right? And, you know, and and whoever is there, right? Whoever's in a way, we either subjugate them or we exterminate them, right? And I just thought that was just really compelling. And I was like, damn, I cannot wait till she killed this mug. Now, while I did appreciate Barry Jenkins' focus on character rather than suffering, I must still say that first episode is jarring. That first episode is, is going it's it's going to be the hardest episode to actually get through. For many who are tired of slave stories and watching terrible violence 
uh, done to black people, then the first episode will not convince you that this series is any different from all the rest. To be fair, right? Like I mentioned earlier, episode two is my favorite of the series. And while violent things still happen to black people, uh, it is not as graphic or horrific and gratuitous as what we get in that very first episode. Um, and so what I'm going to do now, because this is where it gets kind of tough. Um, what I'm going to do now is kind to, I'm going to talk about this scene and I'm going to give you a picture of, 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 of why I really don't like this first episode. Um, so the first episode, we see a slave. This is how we're it's actually, by the way, this is how we're introduced to Arnold Ridgeway. The first episode, we get a scene of a, of a slave trying to escape. He gets captured by Arnold, brought back to the slave master. They proceed to whip this man nearly to death. He's hanging up on a, a post. They're not whipping his back. They're they're whipping his you know his front, right? And he's hanging there, lashes and gashes, deep as hell, all over his body, all over his chest and stomach, bleeding guts just everywhere, right? So not only does he get nearly whipped to death. He is then set on fire. He's set on fire in front of all the other slaves on the plantation. And of course the slave master is, you know, he's doing all this as an example, right? As he called though, this, this is an example for all, for all you niggas not to run away. And I guess it wasn't bad enough that we had to watch him get whipped to death and actually be shown the graphic details. I mean, graphic as fuck. Uh, not only do we have to suffer through him, you know, being set on fire for whatever reason, the choice was made to put us in the first person perspective of that runaway slave while he's being, while he's being burnt alive. We actually see through his eyes as he's looking at these white folks while he's, while he's being burnt alive. The camera does his wide shot and on one side of him, you got the slave standing there watching him burn. And then it pans over and you've got the slave master and his family just having dinner, singing and dancing while this man is being burnt to a fucking crisp. And it doesn't end there, right? Then, by the end of the scene, the camera slowly pans over to show us a charred body. Like, what the f like, what the fuck, man? Like, why, why is it? that I needed to see that, right? I really needed, to, I really needed to watch um, and, and, and witness how evil this, this, this slave master truly is. Why does violence in dramatic context, meaning like in dramatic films and, and whatnot, why does violence have to be so thorough, right? 
after watching Wind River, I don't know if you've ever seen Wind River, but after watching that movie, I absolutely never wanted to watch another rape scene in my entire life. I could throw up just thinking about it. I think it is past time that these scenes are filmed with more care than they currently are. Uh, and maybe play some damn trigger warnings on this shit, right? <laughs> uh, I think rape scenes should be like just not done altogether. Again, you, you got to approach these. These are traumatic scenes that, that, I mean, shit that can hit close to home for folks. And so you have to warn people and you have to approach it with as much care as you possibly can. And I think maybe it's past time we stop displaying gratuitous violence in such thorough detail against black people. I truly don't think it serves a purpose um, other than to elicit an emotional response that I think you could have gotten without doing all of that. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, just, that's, that's just my opinion. Um, another negative on this series. Another negative on this series. Um, <laughs> after talking about that, damn. Uh, that's just, I really just don't like that shit, man. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, another negative is the series is overlong, right? It's overlong. Uh, 10 episodes might be a few too many for some folks, right? This bad boy is long and it feels long. And honestly, you might have to take this in in strides. If you decide to watch this, you might have to take this in in strides. I personally enjoy uh, when directors are overly detailed and gracious with their run times, right? Uh, but that might not be the case for everybody. So I want to, I want to recognize that, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm setting the expectation now. It's going to be a long as watch. <laughs> Another missed opportunity is the meaningful relationships Cora forms in this show. Uh, three of her most impactful, impactful relationships are with men. That being uh, Royal and Caesar, which are two like love interests. And then of course, Arnold Ridgeway, which is the enemy, her, you know, the slave catcher. Uh, and the other, you know, uh, impactful relationship outside of, of those men is uh, with her mom. During her escape, she loses a girlfriend uh, named Lovely. Uh, Lovey, I think her name was. And we, we I mean, we never really got to know uh, Lovey, right? We never really got to know who she was. I mean, I think there's maybe like one scene or two. Like, that's just how forgettable it was, right? I don't even remember if there was any meaningful dialogue between Cora and Lovey, right? Because she, oh, excuse me, uh, because she definitely was broken up. I mean, of course, it's, it's her friend, right? Uh, and, and, and she's going to be distraught, you know, when something happens to her. And so I felt like, you know, why didn't we kind of, you know, get a little more with her? I don't know, maybe... <clears throat> maybe that's something, maybe that's a relationship that wasn't that important to the story, right? But outside Cora's mother, there's no other significant female influence in Cora's journey. And I think that was a missed opportunity to maybe inform, you know, some of her decisions uh, the character makes. Uh, and I feel like, you know, we, th those decisions could have been a little fleshed out more if, uh, if, if, if the character, uh, had a, you know, like I said, a prominent female, uh, influence, right. And, and, and whatever relationship that, that she does build with any women in the series, it's, it's typically done, uh, off screen. Art is a double edged sword, a gift and a curse. <laughs> I will never watch the house that Jack built. Uh, that's a uh, film by the polarizing artist Von Trier. Uh, there are some truly horrifying scenes in that film. And I just think it crosses the line of what is acceptable or appropriate. Right. Um, and I, and I mentioned that to say that 
at what point, right? Uh, at what point do we watch something and we say that crosses the line, right? In terms of stories about racism against black people, I do believe uh, that a line has been crossed too many times, too many times. And if not checked, then crossing that line, right, would no longer be seen as a violation, uh, but, you know, a, a, a bold, you know what I'm saying, captivate, captivating artistic choice, <laughs> right? Artists are not free from responsibility. They really aren't. And like anything else, there are limits on art. There must be limits on art. Uh, Barry got his most egregious depiction of violence against black people out of the way in that first episode. But then after that, I will say, and I will commend him for telling a, a story, uh, a really compelling story about, you know, these characters, right? Uh, with, a, uh, with, you know, phenomenal visuals and a score to boot, okay? You know what I'm saying? This, this show definitely hits, you know, all those things uh, and, and it fires on all cylinders when it comes to the characters, when it comes to the visuals and the score. It really does, man. Uh, and, you know, uh, like I said, it's some, some great stuff is happening uh, if you can get past that very first episode. I do believe that black artists have a responsibility to approach stories like this with tact and empathy. Making characters and not punching bags. Right? That's going to be the biggest difference when it comes to things like this and when it comes to something like them. Uh, them made the characters in its story punching bags. Right? Made them punching bags for constant trauma, constant suffering, right? None of the characters were nuanced. None of the characters were complex. I mean... They didn't have much depth to them, you know what I'm saying? And, and it was just, it, it felt like a spectacle, right? It felt like their suffering was a spectacle. Now, as opposed to this, where you do have nuanced characters, uh, you do have characters going on a journey, uh, characters you actually care about. And because you care about the characters, you care about what happens to them, right? And it just makes the violence that happens to them you know, uh, it, it, it just makes an even uh, greater impact on you emotionally. And so that's going to be the biggest difference. Actually telling a story uh, where, you know, the traumatic experiences are actually, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, adversities that the hero has to overcome. And that's, and to be quite honest... I feel like that's what you're going to get when you watch this. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. It's not perfect at all. The Underground Railroad is not informative, nor is it essential viewing, in my opinion. At least not for casual audiences, right? I think there's a general consensus among black, uh, black audiences that they're tired of seeing stuff like this. And I'm right there with you, to be quite honest. But if you can get past that first episode, then you might appreciate the brilliance at work. That's my review, my thoughts on the Underground Railroad. Go in the comments below and let your boy know what did you think of it, right? Uh, what we, you know, are, are, do you have a favorite scene or favorite quote? There's so many great quotes in this, right? Uh, so many powerful quotes, uh, in this, uh, in this series that I, that I really enjoyed and I really like, I don't know if this is something I will ever revisit. If I do, I'm going to start with episode two <laughs> because that first episode was just a little too much. And it definitely, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, teeters on the line 
of being exactly what I hated about them, right? Uh, but yeah, go in the comments, man. Let me know what did you think of uh, Underground Railroad on a scale from one to 10. What would you rate this series, right? Drop a like on this bad boy, okay? And click that subscribe button eh, if you want to. <laughs> Cause I got more videos coming to you. Hey, and the next film you watch, I hope it encourages, inspires, and entertains. Thanks for watching. Can you click it? Can you click it? Can you click it?